please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Very good morning. Welcome to Power Breakfast. We are in Mumbai New Center. I'm Nigel Souza, and with me is Ekta Batra. Hi, Ekta. Good morning. Earning season continues. We've got some positives coming out uh, in terms of economic data as well that you are tracking very yes. closely. Yes. Yes. Uh, morning, Nigel. Well, what a fabulous piece of uh, data that came out from the IIP. So that seemed to probably, you know, help in terms of sentiment. But like you mentioned, we have a lot of earnings to reckon with through the week as well. Well, Asian markets, they have taken a cue from uh, the U.S. markets. And in fact, they have opened up well in the green. Now, the Nikkei, in fact, is holding with the gain of flush around three tenths of a percent. Remember, we are seeing some kind of strength on the yen. But uh, for the timing, that's been ignored. So the Nikkei is still holding with a gain of around three tenths of a percent. But it's not just the Nikkei. If you pull up the other couple of markets as well, the Kospi was, uh, had opened up in the green. So that's pretty good news. It's holding with a gain of around three tenths of a percent. And the Taiwanese index for this month itself, it's gained already around two and a half percent. That's opened up with a bit of a positive tick as well as uh, the straights. And this would mean the SGX 50 as well as indicating a bump up of nearly around 35 to around 40 points. So green on the screen for the Asian markets early this morning. But talking about the Korean markets, well, the second round of talks between the two Korean nations will take place later today. And the key focus really is going to be the Winter Olympics. CNBC's Cherry Kang reports on the same. They haven't uh, started their talks yet, but they are expected to primarily focus on the coordination for the Winter Olympic Games. And they could limit today's talks to the art troupe that uh, North Korea will be sending to South Korea's Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games. They do have less than a month to go, so they are expected to uh, primarily focus on the coordination for the Games. But one topic that could be potentially one of the talking points today is South Korea's suggestion for the joint march at the Olympic Games at the opening ceremony that is at the Games so certainly something that we need to be watching for what kind of thought that we'll be getting here but if we only talk Olympics then we're not really hitting the core of the issue without talking about of course North Korea's nuclear program some people will try to do just that in Vancouver later this week we'll be getting uh, South Korea's participation Rex Tillerson will be there but one caveat is that China and Russia will not be making it so well without these two important players when it comes to uh, discussing North Korea's nuclear program some people say that it may not really be meaningful too much or binding at all Okay, so that's the update coming in on uh, North Korea and the details there. But on Wall Street, U.S. markets rose to record highs on Friday after some of the major financial companies like J.P. Morgan Chase, BlackRock and Wells Fargo all reported better than expected quarterly numbers. So the Dow rose 229 points to close at an all-time high. S&P 500 and Nasdaq ended with gains of 7 tenths of a percent as well. Well, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink expects the Republican tax overhaul law to largely help Americans and will add 1% economic growth. On the markets, Fink said that they are still quite bullish on stocks. Take a look. What we try to tell everybody is to be mostly in equities. I mean, I've said this repeatedly over years, you know, be 100% in equities, I think I said in 2012. I, I think people are not good at market timing, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. And for those who are saving, and, and savings is not as much fun as consuming, but if you're saving for the outcome of retirement, which is a 30, 40 year obligation, that saving should be in things that can compound over a long period of time, and in equities is a far better asset class than fixed income. This is a very unusual time. We have a path by the Federal Reserve that is a tightening path. Mm -hmm. You rarely see fiscal policy stimulus when you have monetary policy tightening. You mean the tax plan that the just tax passed? Plan. Right. People will tell me if you could get a tax plan, you could lower corporate tax, you do it any time. So I'm not trying to suggest timing, but it's unfortunate when we're going to have that stimulus. And we believe that tax, the tax bill is going to create at least 1% added stimulus. We're more, probably a little 1 more. 1% GDP growth. Yes, 1% added growth. So we're probably a little more constructive on the composition of the tax cut and what it's going to do to the economy. Well, markets are beginning to price in a more aggressive Federal Reserve 
for 2018. Now, an exclusive with CNBC's Steve Leisman, Dallas Fed President Robert Kaplan says that there is a chance that unemployment will drop below 4% and overshoot full employment. Here's an exclusive conversation on the impact of the tax plan on the Fed's 2018 outlook as well as the Fed rate trajectory. For uh, 2018, we've marked up our GDP forecast by a few tenths of a, a percentage point. So we're now expecting two and a half, two and three quarters percent GDP growth for uh, 2018. A little less of a positive effect for 19 and even a little less for 20 so that we think the effect of the tax law will be front end loaded and will tail off Why in the out years. Off? Um, uh, well, uh, the, the first event, there's a, there's a corporate tax reform element. We hope that part will be sustainable, right. uh, which encourages people to domicile here, invest here, all that. There's a part of this is a, which is a tax cut financed by increase in the debt. That part is the part where I was more concerned about, which gives you a short-term bump, which then tails off in the out years. And, uh, and so that's the reason for this. Okay, so you can write the next question I'm going to ask. <laughs> if you bumped your GDP forecast, yeah. have you changed your rate outlook? Uh, I, my base case uh, is still that we should increase rates three times this year. Uh, I, I'm, I probably have a little more stronger conviction that three times, not less than three times, is appropriate. Uh, it's possible it could be more than three times, but that's still the base case. And I, I have more conviction that we're going to get down into the threes in terms of headline unemployment, i.e., we're going to overshoot full employment and have a, a, a more uh, a tighter job market than even we would have had. Well, turning attention to the European markets, then, they ended in the positive territory in Friday's trading session. Investors, they were reacting to a whole host of factors, one being earnings for sure, there was data, as well as there was a political breakthrough in Germany. And that explains why, in fact, that market ended in the green, because German coalition party leaders, they reached a breakthrough in preliminary talks to form a new government. So that explains why, in fact, there is some political stability as well. And all the three frontliners, no worries there, they ended in the green. But you take a look at the peripheral indices, well, it was a tad bit mixed. You pull up the Italian as well as the Portuguese index, they moved in opposite directions. But if you look at the emerging markets, well, the Russian market was a big outperformer, ending with gains of around a percent. Okay, and in the currency space, the dollar index has hit fresh three-year lows as the euro and pound have built further on gains from late last week uh, that were spurred by, in fact, political developments in Europe. And in the world of commodities, then, oil prices, they dip as rising drilling activity in the United States points to some higher output. However, output cuts led by OPEC as well as Russia they continue to support prices which are holding near December 2014 highs. From precious metals, we have gold prices which have risen as the dollar has weakened. This Monday morning, well, back home on Dalal Street, the benchmark indices recovered from the afternoon lows to close at record highs. The Nifty closed well above 10,600. The Sensex was a quarter percent in the green. The Bank Nifty also closed almost 100 points in the green. The Mid-Cap Index, on the other hand, recovered from lows but failed to turn positive and ended with losses of over one-tenth of a percent. So overall, uh, let's see how we're stacked up for today. We have a lot of m and &E news to react to today, not to mention the IIP and CPI data, Nigel. Absolutely, Ekta. You know, but... Uh you know, we are talking about rationally that this market is fairly valued. You could expect mm. some profit booking. But every day you wake up and you look at the U.S. markets, they are just making fresh all-time highs. And if that's the case, then very difficult to find a fault with an emerging market like ours. Same thing happened on Friday's trading session. The U.S. markets ended in the green. And if you take a look at the S&P 500, well, we have a bit of a record that's playing out. Because in 2018... Till now, in fact, the S&P 500 is up nearly around 4.2%. In 2003, you know, that's closer around 15 years ago, that uh, was the last best start to the year because at that point of time, it was up 5.9%. But remember, at that point of time, the S&P 500 was trading at 900 levels all. So it was a 45-point uh, bump up. Now, in fact, we're at around 2,800. So that keep that in mind that, in fact, this start is really a, a dream start for the U.S. markets. But coming back home, in India, well, we have been seeing the bulls, they are factoring in most of the positives. 
Now, in fact, they are hungry for bad news. Any kind of negative news is being bought into. And that's what happened in Friday's trade. The Nifty, the Nifty Bank, both of them recovered a big margin from the low point of the day. We had the Nifty, in fact, entering virtually at the high point of the day. And today, in fact, 10,700 should get taken out. The mid-caps, though, they were relative underperformers in Friday's trade. But you just, you know, that's just for a headline. If you take a look at some stocks that are out of the Nifty that did very, very well, you had AB Beam. You had Sun TV, you had Pirillite, all of them. Remember, they have already had a good run. But in Friday's trading session, these stocks, they ended with big gains. By the end of the day, we wanted to know what do the institutions do. Well, institutions, they were net buyers. The FIs, they sold roughly around 200 crores, 150, 200 crores. But the DI buying is back. And in the last four trading sessions, the DIs are pumping in nearly around 650 crores on a per day basis. I'll take that as a positive because DIs, they have been getting the direction right in our markets. In terms of premium, it's only around five points uh, or thereabouts in terms of the Nifty premium, telling you that there is some shorting from the top as well. And in Friday's trade, well, on the Nifty futures, there was not so much action. But you take a look at the Nifty Bank futures, the open interest was up by nearly around 11%. And even in absolute terms, you know, if you look at it, the number of shares that were added were, were more than what was added on the Nifty futures. So there seems to be a bit of a play going on on uh, the Nifty Bank. Well, the FIs, they net long on the index, 53% of their positions on the long side. And in Friday's trade, they bought more calls than puts. In fact, eight calls for every one put is what they bought. And there's some euphoria playing out. 11,200, 11,000 calls, they were active. On the downside, the 10,200 uh, put as well was active. So just keep an eye out. We may be bracing ourselves for a big move. But, um, you know, in an uptrending market, when you see a lot of action on the put side, the 10,700, 10,600 put, both of them had nearly around 15, 16 lakh shares between them, telling you that the 10,500 mark, that should be a firm base for uh, the Nifty in the near term. And we'll be reacting to this IIP data as well that looked very, very good as uh, you were telling us um, as well. So keep an eye on that front. But the inflation number, I mean, that's a little bit of a scare, isn't it? Uh, no, I think that's in line. Uh, mm. It wasn't too much of a scare, but what really, uh, maybe the surprise on the I IIP should probably overshadow, overshadow the that. little bit of negative that we got from the CPI. So that should be something interesting. But IIP, there were just one-offs in the data, which might have propelled the number this time round. Uh, so I think it was antacid production, which mm. really propelled the data. So let's see whether this is sustainable or not, or whether this is a flash in the pan. And okay. you know, uh, really, uh, we need to see other high frequency data as well, which, however, has been pointing to a positive. But nonetheless, uh, what about stocks? Uh, we look at Infosys. That has to react. Remember, the stock is at around 1,080. So at around 860, it was trading at around 12 and a half times. Now it's trading at around 15 and a half to around 16 times. Still a 20% discount to TCS and IFL's note this morning says that that's unwarranted. So we'll keep an eye out on that one. The numbers look more or less in line. Well, we have uh, granules. Oh, there, in fact, uh, the RBI has gone ahead and hiked the FI limit. So keep an eye out uh, on uh, that stock as well. HTFC, that's going to be in focus. Remember, they issued some shares uh, close to around 11,000 crores in total. And, and Mr. KK Mystery, in fact, he told CNBC TV that they're eyeing some inorganic opportunities in the mortgage lending space. So just keep an eye out on that. That's an important statement that's coming in there. Um, IDFC Bank, as well as Capital First, Abhishek and Nisha, they were on top of this all of last week. Remember, these stocks have gained nearly around 20 to around 25 percent in less than a month. Now, the merger ratio is favorable for Capital First, so expect that stock to open up. And then, in fact, uh, accordingly, you'll see IDFC uh, Bank as well move. So IDFC Bank likely to open in the red, but Capital First likely to open up well in the green. So keep an eye on that front. Muthut Capital, numbers look very, very good on a year-on-year -year basis, sequential basis as well. Stock opens up in the green. And uh, Bansali Engineering uh, Polymers, I remember a year ago, a little more than that, studying this company. It's up close to around 10x from there. But in fact, the numbers, it justified that move. And results today, Federal Bank will be the big one. And in fact, Delta Corp as well will be looking out uh, for those set of numbers. So we'll keep an eye out on that front, Ekta.